Well, here is another piece that I finished on what is described as a child's loom. I attest that you can still make beautiful things with said child's loom. Uh, just for like a review, this was made for my dear friend's wedding gift. We went and foraged a lot of these items together. And then I used a lot of the items that we forged together, uh, not only in this, but in the dies for the uh, cord that I made and that's just a simple braid but it was also the first time that I ever added some tassels and I actually left the wefts or the warps on this one and used it as part of the tassel because I thought it actually had a nice contrast with all of the earth tones to have like a stark white in there and I think it came out really nice we've got little felt acorns I used both epoxy resin and wrapping um, if your ancestors had had access to epoxy resin, they would have used it. Don't deny your ancestors the use to good tools. There's nothing wrong with using both. So it has some beautiful binding on it, and I thought this was a great crystal to put on there. And it's got a little hanger. So this is another piece just made on what is described as a child's toy loom. You can still make valid and beautiful art even on a child's toy loom. It's gorgeous. I love it. I hope that they love it too. Uh, if they don't, I guess I'll tell you. But also, we have their beautiful little felt things to go with it. So I think that makes a pretty nice gift. That's probably two or three days worth of like on and off weaving because I do other projects in between so that my back doesn't get tired. Anyway, that's uh, one of the many projects that I wove on the kid looms. And uh, I will show you some more shortly. Well, hello. The next uh, weaving we'll be going over that was made on a child's toy loom is this one. Uh, I will have another video explaining this in detail, but this is my dad's uh, Christmas present that I made myself and also made with the help of a uh, Maori carver from Aotearoa named Adrian. And he's a Maitapapa carver in uh, Dunedin, New Zealand. So I highly recommend you check out his carvings if you're interested in any of this. I have all types of different punamu stone on this. This is a hag stone that I found myself and it was chosen specifically because directly on the back when it is balanced just so and it will be against a wall. There's a perfect hole to stick a screw into your wall and hang this from. So that was a great find. Also found this excellent uh, shell that has been drilled by a moon snail. Moon snails make those holes. Those holes are made by Pidoc clams. That hole was made by a moon snail. Don't argue with me, I'm right. You can Google it. Google it, tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, beautiful pieces of Ponamu, and if you would like to hear about the long story of that, please watch the video about this weaving, which is me kind of reconnecting with my Maori culture. But I wove all of this with uh, wool we dyed over the summer, all together in all of the 50, 50 freaking experiments you watched me do. And then here's the end, which also includes an experiment item, which was some silk charmeuse that I wanted to see how it would come out if I just like chucked it in and did a few experiments with it. It came out looking very wonderful and ripply like water. So I used that because there's a lot of stillness and tension in the weaving just by virtue of what it is. There's a lot of surface tension in stone, obviously, because it's like visually very tight. Maybe this is autism. Maybe it's synesthesia. You tell me. But anyway, all of it seemed very tense. And so I wanted something that was very motion rich because the stick has visual motion, but is also tense in texture. That might just be autism. I'm beginning to hear myself and it sounds weird. Uh, so I hung the silk because even like the smallest breeze, like my little hand fan here, will make the silk ruffle. So you'll get some natural shine and movement in the light when it is hanging. It's impossible to film while hanging, so I won't do that. It makes it look not, not as nice when I try to film it against a crazy bookshelf. Anyway, I think this came out super lovely. This was uh, a little earlier in my process, so I have knots. You can see where I have threaded through my warps. Um, and I'm just very happy with how this came out. I think it's going to make a wonderful Christmas gift. And you can also see where I added a little silk detail up here to the Ponamu teardrop. And that looks fantastic. And I believe this is the same stone that our necklaces were carved from, from Adrian. So 
I love that it has all of my foraged objects on it. I love that I found the stick myself. And now I will be wrapping this up to give to my dad for Christmas. All right, so I will update you on other stuff I made on a child's toy loom very shortly. Oh, well, that glue was not dry yet. We'll come back to that. All right, though you are being shown out of order, this is actually the first thing that I wove on a child's loom. I think it came out pretty great, to be honest. Um, I learned a lot. You can see the sides going in and out a little bit as it goes. And I went to far too much effort. I drilled individual holes for every single warp. I would not recommend doing that unless you really, really like whatever you wove or the person you're weaving it to. It has, I capped it with beads. I didn't really know how to address the knot situation. So I capped it in beads. I don't know if that was the right call. I also wove in all of these ends or used them, but where it was not longer, I didn't want to see the warp. So I chose to put a very expensive moonstone faceted bead on any of the exposed warp areas because that was practical and efficient. Um, there's also a venturine up here and carnelian, so it's quite witchy. It's a manzanita branch that I gathered myself with a hagstone that I also gathered myself. It has some dead coral and algae on it, and that's the butt of a piddock clam in there. Uh, the back is very flat, so it will fit nicely on the wall, and it has a hole at the top so you can stick something in the wall to hold it up. And then at the end, also I did this just in a repetitive rainbow pattern. It's like a Roy G. Biv, basically. Uh, the ends I capped in little acorns that I picked myself, and I, again, I didn't know what to do about the knots sticking out, so I, 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 I acorned them. That seemed like the most natural thing to do. I think this is actually turned round to backwards. Flip. There we go. This is her good side, we'll say. Um, and then, you know, why not add some more moonstones, because there's never enough spendy beads on anything. But they were rainbow, and it was rainbow, and so it refracts in it. This is a really good one. Like, this one has a really good... See that rainbow? That one has a great fire on it. Look at that. Look at the fire on that piece of moonstone. Look at that. Lovely. Anyway, uh, I felt it was worthy enough to use that many beads on it. And these donut beads are... If you're a bead person, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't a cheap bead situation. Uh, we may have broken a bead at some point, or it popped from the glue. I'm not sure what happened, but we seem to be missing half a bead. Um, this has been hanging on the wall for the last month or two, as I've been weaving a bunch of other stuff. Um, I have, I think, one more item to show you before I will cut this video off, and uh, there's another video that explains how to make all of the next thing. Alright, and the last thing I would like to share of things I made on a child's loom, and these were all made on Orlando Loom, which is the um, dual heddle, this little guy, little, little $40 buddy here, uh, this is Orlando Loom, uh, he was the progenitor of all of these, um, please don't, Orlando, please stop that. He was aggressively trying to eat himself off the table. Anyway, these are our mug rugs that we made with all of the rest of our hand-dyed yarn, uh, dyed with plants and natural things all through the summer. You can look at me dyeing all of this yarn at some point uh, in all of my experimental videos. But these, I think, are a really great Christmas gift or any or any time of year gift. You want to pack the fiber really densely, like it's hard for me to pull apart this. You can see the warps, and that's to keep your table from being burnt. You also want to trim your fringes down so they don't become cat attractants and knock hot things into people's laps. But otherwise, the loom did a great job. I think these are adorable. I don't think a single person would be sad to get them. And uh, I think that if proven, to myself, not that anyone else challenged me, but I think we've all seen that the toy loom is not a toy. It's just a loom. It's just a very small loom that works in a very not toy sense if you make a few uh, adjustments for tension. Anyway, I was super impressed with this. Uh, these are the, I guess, one, two, three, four total projects, but a lot of small things that I made on this loom. I'm super happy with it, and I hope that this encourages you to go try something new. You can make something that looks very nice and professional with absolutely no life experience whatsoever in the craft. Just uh, make things really, really uh, high in tension and pack that fiber in. You got this. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!